my name is Tim Bacon. I'm a certified strength and conditioning specialist. And we're here today to talk about some very useful strength training exercises for squash. It doesn't take a lot of common sense to realize when you look at um, the forehand drive, we look at the backhand drive. It doesn't take a lot of common sense to realize that many of the strength training exercises we do, like bicep curls or military press, a lot of these traditional bodybuilding exercises, often they're unit joint, just using one joint. It doesn't take a lot of common sense to realize that they don't actually have a lot to do with uh, strength training for squash. The squash swing is basically a throwing action where most of the force is created by the legs, transferred through the hips to the torso, and then finally down to the arm and the wrist and hand. So what we should focus on is generating forces, this twisting type of force. So what we're going to do today is look at some good twisting exercises for squash. We're going to do twisting exercises for squash. It's important to warm up gradually. Here's a great twisting warm-up exercise. Dorsiflex your feet, bring your toes towards your shin. Bend your knees at right angle, back flat on the floor, tighten your core, and just use a full range of motion going from side to side. Good low intensity way to warm up for more twisting exercises. A little bit more of a dynamic warm up is just to get into an athletic stance position with feet shoulder width apart. And just nice and easy, swing side to side. Make sure you rotate the hips, keeping the core your pillar nice and solid. This next exercise is called walking lunge with a twist. Step out into a lunge position, making sure your knee is above your ankle, and twist to the side, and then another step, and twist to the side, keeping the core tight, good posture. This exercise can be done with or without a medicine ball. The medicine ball, medicine ball just adds a little bit of a stability and a strength challenge. You might be wondering how many of these exercises you should be doing. A good rule of thumb is to do one or two sets of each exercise and about 10 repetitions. That's 10 repetitions on each side. So if you're doing a lunge, you would do 10 with this leg and 10 with the other leg. If you're doing throws, you would do 10 on this side and then 10 on the other. If you're doing the exercises fairly slowly, you can do them with about a minute's rest between exercises. If you're doing them a lot more explosively, then you'll need a lot more rest, maybe uh, two minutes or three minutes between exercises. You can work on other things during that time. In terms of twisting or throwing exercises, just like in squash, you could have more rotation or you could have less rotation. And the same principle when you're working with a medicine ball on different throws. Here's a basic exercise called the side throw. Athletic stance, shoulder, feet shoulder width apart. It's important to keep the core tight and make sure you propel using your legs and involve your hip in the throws. And of course you would do both sides. doing this particular throw from a side stance, but just like in squash where often we hit open stance, you can also do these throws from an open stance. Start with a light medicine ball. This is four pounds. So if you're a junior, maybe start with two pounds, normal adult, four pounds, and then you can work your way up uh, progressively. Often in squash, We'll stretch, take a big stretch into a lunge position, and then we'll hit. Or on the back end, a big stretch and then a hit. So we can help strengthen that action by getting into a lunge position and throwing from a lunge position as well. Now we're going to look at another. 
uh, group of exercises, three exercises that emphasize generating ground force and twisting using our core for, for squash. This is a free motion cable cross machine. Uh, the first exercise is simply uh, the twist. And you can get into a variety of positions, but um, basically you can get into sort of a modified lunge position. And then tighten your core, lock your glutes, ensure an athletic stance. That's a great way of working uh, the torso muscles involved in the swing. In squash, of course, we don't only work in one plane. Um, we also come downwards sometimes. So a very good exercise for that is um, the wood chop. So you start with the attachment up high, tighten the core, and twist down. This last exercise is even a little bit more squash specific because it uses one arm. Put the attachment down low, reach down, tighten the core, the back, make sure your pillar is solid. In this exercise, it's a little bit more explosive. Make sure you fully contract your glute. This ensures proper hip function. And of course, you do both sides. So that's it for today. We've seen a series of exercises that will help you generate forces from the ground up in a twisting action, utilizing all the muscles necessary to give power to your full strokes. Thanks.